Northwestern Energy is actually pretty unique. We're very rural in nature. We serve a large geography and lots of miles of line. I always say that two thirds of our infrastructure serves about one third of our customers. But when you look at the geographic footprint, probably one of the largest utilities in the nation actually. We have a lot of radio lines. We have a lot of customers that are exposed to just a sheer number of miles. We have a lot of challenges with wind, with storms, snowstorms particularly. The system in general operates extraordinarily well even given those challenges. On average, a customer in Montana is out of power about two hours annually. Our urban customers actually have very strong reliability, so generally less than an hour of outage time on average. But on average, our rural customers are out of power more like five to six hours. One of the things that we want to do through infrastructure investment and so forth is improve that, which will ultimately improve overall reliability. We're standing here at the Beck Hill project. It was built in 2015. This was our first pilot project to test a storage application to back up a rural circuit. The concept here was when we lose power on the main line, could we use battery storage as a backup? So behind me is the critical switch that the Beck Hill microgrid isolates from the utility. When the microgrid is connected to the utility, uh, the energy from the PV panels keep the batteries charged. And once the batteries are fully charged, the, the energy from the PV panels feed back up to the utility and help support the utility system. And this operates 24 seven. PV panels, when we're in a microgrid operation, they actually can help support the microgrid and produce energy while the batteries are also discharging. So it offsets the amount of storage we need and we can do uh, extended outages uh, when the sun is shining. The microgrid container is self-sufficient and so all the energy is produced uh, and consumed within that storage container. Inside is a small little automation controller. The automation controller has all the logic that automatically isolates the microgrid from the utility, repowers the customers, and automatically restores the customers back to utility power once it's available. This system backs up roughly 17 customers. It's very small, but we built it small on purpose just to be able to test the application. It works very well. Over the last five years, it's operated about 15 times really flawlessly. We could have did this without solar, but we also wanted to include solar so that it could be operated as a true microgrid. Lead acid batteries are very critical to maintain temperature between about 60 to 80 degrees. And so we have to both heat and cool those batteries uh, to maintain that uh, temperature to maintain the life of the batteries. And again, that energy is helped offset by PV production. We have a partnership with a company called Kilowatt Labs. That particular company builds a storage medium that uses supercapacitors, solid state technology as the basis for their storage. We're excited about the technology because it has so many different advantages over other technologies like lithium ion. For example, the temperature range in which it operates is very broad, so it can operate to negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit up to 130, 140 degrees Fahrenheit without really damaging or hurting the systems. They have a very high charge rate and discharge rate, which is another advantage, and they last a long time. We built the project in the Yellowstone National Park using that technology and integrated with a solar system so it acts as a true microgrid. It's at West Thumb. It's just the unique relationship that we have with the Park Service where we're really able to understand what their wants and needs are and really go towards a collaborative solution. From a reliability perspective, it's a radial fed system. There is some need for newer technologies, more alternative solutions, and I think that's kind of where the West Thumb solution came into play. Well, it was the winter of 2019, and we snowmobiled in here to look at a site. The height for the uh, solar panels was because of snow. There you can get four to five feet in here, and for wildlife issues too. Wildlife issues would be a bull elk rubbing his antlers on the solar panels. That's probably why they went with metal structures instead of wood. Park loves to hide everything and they do a good job of it. As big as it is, it's, it's actually really hard to see. When the solar building came in, it was just a Connex 
and the park service wanted us to make it look like a uh, log cabin and of course then we have to paint it to make it look like a park service building but people really don't know what it is not unless they walk over here and see what we're doing so it does really blend in we have solar panels that's our source it's coming in on secondary line coming into this junction can right here from that junction can into the building it terminates on the inside from the batteries then it goes back through the transformer and then to the bookstore on the storage side of it it's a new tool in our toolkit the traditional way of fixing a problem was build a new substation or build a new circuit and when you do that, you do them in lumpy investments. I don't build for the next little one. I build for 10 or 15 years out. So you make a large investment in that area. But this technology, we can have batteries or storage medium that we can move around the system. So again, it'll continue to grow and then you'll build a new substation and then you can pick the storage up and move it to the next place that you're having a concern. After the data, then we're going to get into the optimization phase. And that is, how do you get the most out of the assets? So you might be able to push out capital investments for a year or two or even five years because you have better situational awareness. We're testing some other storage modules in a test site in Missoula. This here is a uh, test bench um, for evaluating new energy storage technology. These days, battery technology is changing every year. There's new types of batteries, there's new voltage ranges, new current ratings, and we just wanted an ability to be able to test new technology as it comes out in real life situations, determine how much energy we could get out of it, what temperature does to the technology, and see what kind of efficiencies we could achieve. So this system works by connecting to the utility grid through two solar converters charging the batteries or storage technology from the utility grid when needed and then we can choose if when and how to discharge the storage to test different use cases the dc storage media that we're using here is the sirius storage modules by kilowatt labs this system here can be used to validate larger projects and allow us to have the fundamentals to move forward with larger energy storage installations Northwestern's distribution system, I think, is going to go through some dynamic changes over the next decade. Renewable energy has its place, and it's certainly something that will happen and occur just naturally over time. When we built this project, it was still relatively expensive to alternatives, but what we wanted to do was make sure that as technology and storage becomes much more price competitive, that we were prepared and we had some expertise in being able to build systems just like this one. What we're looking at is several potential locations where we could utilize storage on a much bigger scale than this. We've had a big influx of data from a utility perspective and not only an influx of additional data but more real-time data. So I think where that brings opportunities is for us to understand what's actually going on in our system. Uh, from an analytics perspective, we're using new tools and technologies to really combine that data and really analyze that data. One of the things that we tried to do when developing these newer strategies is making that data more transparent. So we've created a number of dashboards, tried to make these dashboards pretty user friendly and very targeted to our audience. So whether it be an executive trying to understand the value of a solution or an engineer trying to understand how to implement a solution, it really gives them a good starting place to understand what the data is telling us. The partnerships that we have with all of our cities, I think is very strong. In 2016, we had a community stakeholder group, community leaders throughout Montana come together and, and talk about solar energy and what they would like to see. The stakeholder group determined that the Missoula project was supposed to be school themed, working with students, educating students. I think it's a relatively uncharted territory for us. Before this came about, we really didn't have a lot of curriculum in the area of you know, renewable energy. And so as we looked at pilot projects for the Missoula School District, uh, this one is number one, an outdoor classroom for students to sit under, provide shade, integrate kind of with an outdoor area. But at the same time, it's also to study uh, renewable energy. Uh, as we shift orientation of PV panels, it'll capture the sun's rays at different times of the day and produce different outputs at each one of the three sections. And the students can start understanding how to align solar energy 
with loads that they're actually consuming. So at Big Sky School, uh, we have the smart inverters up behind me. We also have the solar uh, optimizers. But as, as this project developed and we brought in storage, we then took on a little bit different of an approach. So the solar production that we have up here actually matched the energy storage capability of our batteries. So charge it up during the day, and then we'll have the battery discharge when a basketball game's going on or a volleyball game's going on. So people can see how the production of solar matches to the, to the loads during the evening and how long that battery will last. You got to work with your community leaders and be partner with, with your community to be innovative in doing building integrated PV. We took preliminary designs at each one of the high school and got their feedback and worked with those stakeholders to develop the overall pilot projects. We're at Willard Alternative School here in Missoula. The concept that we came to was to actually build a fence out of solar panels. You can tell it kind of fits in with the, the aesthetics of the school, just with the, the robust posts and the, and the chain link fence, and allows access for, for not only the students, but the neighbors to access the playground when, when school isn't in session. It did require a lot of input from, from the neighbors here and, and um, everyone living in the area. I think in the end, everybody basically was pretty happy with, with what they got out of it. If you think about how many fences are out there, what if they were all solar fences? And so you're kind of challenging the ordinary thing of rooftop or ground mount solar. You're challenging that with how do we put it into our structures? And hopefully students can think about that and think about solar a little bit differently. So we're at Hellgate High School. Um, Hellgate was a really challenging design. It was our urban integration design. What made uh, Hellgate really neat is working with the community to install uh, a solar array. As you can see, uh, you know, there's not a lot of space around us. Uh, it's very tight. The school needs to maintain the roof. They wanted it to stay off the roof, and so we had limited space to build a, uh, a solar array. And so with this urban integration project, we had to look at a variety of designs. What did the community want from a visual perspective and maximizing production? Another good example is the city of Bozeman actually donated the land on one of their properties where we built a community sustainability, it was a community solar project. So obviously without those partnerships, we couldn't do the things we're doing. Uh, the day we put this in, there was a customer that happened to be here and was extremely happy that the reliability for that particular segment of this circuit was going to improve. And I'm excited about the possibilities of what we can do, especially when we're integrating it with other foundational technologies that we're currently doing with advanced metering infrastructure, advanced distribution management system. This gives us another tool that we can use to advance our distribution system and see a lot of the changes that we're looking at into the future.